endured by the soldiers fighting and dying in Flanders falls on those who have assembled at the Covadairia. More than 70,000 have gathered from every walk of life, some hoping to view the promised miracle, some to taunt this display of medieval supernaturalism. The most important influential newspapers in the country have been carrying stories for weeks critical of the events at Fatima. It has become a principal target of the anti-clerical press, the butt of jokes, the subject of columns of satire. Avelino d'Almeida, an outspoken skeptic regarding the apparitions, witnesses the occasion. He is the managing editor of Oseculo, the largest newspaper in Lisbon. His written account appears on the front page. A spectacle unique and incredible if one had not been a witness to it. One can see the crowd turn toward the sun, which reveals itself free of clouds at full noon. The great star of the day makes one think of a silver plaque, and it is possible to look on it without the least discomfort. It might be an eclipse, but now it bursts forth in a colossal clamor, and we hear spectators cry, miracle, miracle, marvel, marvel. Before the astonished crowd, the sun trembled, made brusque movements unprecedented and outside of all cosmic law. The sun has danced. We said, Lucia, if it is true that you can see Our Lady, why don't you ask her to perform some miracle for everybody to see? And Lucia said, Our Lady says on October 13th, something will happen for everybody to see. My mother always argued, saying that Our Lady couldn't make miracles for everybody to see. She could make miracles, but not for everybody to see. But when she saw the miracle of the sun, she could really believe. I saw, and, and my sister also, and my mother shouted, here is the miracle promised by Our Lady in the sun for everybody to see. It was a light rain when Lucia said, close your umbrellas because Our Lady is going to appear. It seemed that the sun was saying goodbye to the sky and coming down like a saucer, singing and working and coming down and stopped only when it almost reached the ground. Then my mother believed. Everybody was amazed. And it rained so much. The weather was like today. Later, the sun came out, and after midday, the sun started teasing, teasing, teasing. Everybody was frightened. Oh my God, everybody was frightened. And the colors appeared, like a rainbow, near the bottom of the hill. We thought we would die. But thanks, God, nobody died. And we saw a shadow, a shadow. And it was bright like lightning, lightning on the north. During the miracle, everybody knelt down on that wet earth and everything. And everybody knelt down and was screaming, asking for mercy and saying, miracle, miracle. It was Our Lady, M miracle for everybody to see. And they believed. After the miracle, everything was dry, completely dry. As reported by those present and confirmed by newspaper accounts, the phenomenon lasted approximately 12 minutes. The sun zigzagging in the sky, reflecting brilliant multi-hued colors on the upturned faces, the trees, and earth, and climaxing with the sun plunging down toward the thousands gathered in the Kova. Many thought the end of the world had come. It suddenly reversed itself, returning to its normal position in the sky. Yet another extraordinary phenomenon, all that had been soaked by the rain, was now dry, ground and people. 
theories of mass hypnotism, of autosuggestion, were discarded. When it was discovered that many reliable witnesses at great distances from the Koba had seen the solar phenomenon. Among them, the poet Alfonso Lopez Vieira. He saw it from his home at San Pedro, 40 kilometers from Fatima. Interrogation transcripts reveal the three children see Jesus, who blesses the crowd. It is on this day, October 13, 1917, the beautiful lady declares herself saying, I am the lady of the rosary. The three shepherd children, what does the future hold for them? During the June appearance, the lady said that Jacinta and her brother Francisco would soon be with her in heaven, but that Lucia would live longer, that Jesus wished Lucia to remain in the world. Within 28 months, brother and sister, Francisco and Jacinta, are dead. For Lucia, intense loneliness follows the deaths of her cousins. She is happy to agree with her parents and Bishop José da Silva's suggestion that she, at age 14, enter the Dorothean Sisters School in the city of Porto. Later, as Sister Mary Lucia of the Immaculate Heart, she enters a cloister convent of discalced Carmelites. November 7th, 1917, 2 a.m. Bolsheviks seize the Baltic Railroad and Telegraph offices. At dawn, the State Bank and Telephone Exchange. At 8 a.m., the Bolsheviks know they have won. Now, obviously, what Fatima has taught us is being realized because Communism is spreading its errors throughout the world. And when I say communism, I mean a basically materialistic, anti-religious philosophy. This is basically what communism is, under the cover of social reforms. Now, as a Christian, I'm passionately for social justice, wherever it can be established, but definitely not under the cover of atheism. In 1917, the Lady of Fatima told the three children she would come again to speak further with Lucia concerning two requests. The first, that Holy Communion be received on the first Saturday of five successive months to be offered in reparation. This apparition came to pass December 10th, 1925. The second request, the consecration of Russia by the Pope. In the year 1929, on June 25th, the Blessed Trinity and the Virgin Mary appeared to Sister Lucia in her convent chapel. Our Lady said that the moment had come to ask the Holy Father to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary with all the bishops of the world in order to gain world peace. Subsequent popes did enact this consecration, this entrustment of Russia to God through the Virgin Mary in various manners. In 1932, after 15 years of ecclesiastical investigation, the Bishop of Fatima and Rome declared the Fatima miracle and message worthy of belief. Our Lady said the war was going to end, but if the world didn't improve, didn't live according to religious principles, there would be another and worse war during the reign of Pius XI. There will be a sign, a night illumined by an unknown light, and by this great sign, Lucia will know that God is going to punish the world for its crimes by means of another and greater war. January 25th, 1938 is the night illumined by an unknown light. Newspapers headline the event in Germany, Switzerland, Spain, in Hungary, Norway, Italy, Greece, and the United States. In Europe, the sky was said to be like a furnace, aglow with crimson fire. Seen from the North Sea to the Adriatic, from nine at night to two in the morning. Lucia, seeing it from her convent window, recognizes it as the sign. 
forty seven days after the great lie sunday march thirteenth hitler invades austria it's the anxious prophecy fulfilled the curtain is raised on world war two man's inhumanity to man has never been more evident an estimated forty million casualties far in excess of world war one here seventy thousand men women and children are killed or injured in an instant hiroshima falls to the atom bomb when solzhenitsyn arrived in the western world he's a person i admire very much he said immediately what is wrong with you western people is that you have lost your sense of good and evil and it is true that without an awareness of good and evil it is impossible for us to live coherently uh, at all two superpowers emerge from world war ii the united states and russia emerged to become involved in a cold war an ideological battle between democracy and communism 1950 korea the homeless the refugees the dead 1960 vietnam the homeless the refugees the dead if my requests are heeded Russia will be converted. If not, she will continue to spread her errors, causing wars. Where this sister now prays, in the chapel of Sister Lucia's convent in Portugal, there stands a statue of Mary. Sister Lucia worked with a sculptor for six months and says it's a good likeness, the best that she has seen. On the convent wall, Passers-by are reminded of present-day communist attacks on the church. This graffiti reads, Religion is the opiate of the people. The secret of Fatima, given to the three children by the Virgin Mary in 1917, has been the subject of infinite, continuing speculation. In 1942, the writings of Sister Lucia, including the secret in a separate envelope, were sent to the Bishop of Leria. In 1957, the writings were sent to Rome. Pope John XXIII opened the envelope, read its contents, and kept it secret. Each subsequent pope was given the letter containing the secret, and a cardinal certainly read it, because it was mentioned to me during a conference. I was told Cardinal Ottaviani had read it. The pope showed it to him, and it would be published only when the Pope wishes it to be. In many parts of the world, in different countries, many versions of the secret of Fatima have appeared. I have often received stories and articles published in newspapers and magazines concerning the secret, written as if the secret were known to the author. There were so many I decided to contact Sister Lucia myself because these stories describe apocalyptic events, tell of disgraces that will befall humanity, of nations that will disappear, including descriptions of actual contemporary political situations that we are experiencing. I felt it was my duty as the present Bishop of Maria Fatima, as someone responsible for the authenticity of the message, it was my duty to clarify it. I contacted Sister Lucia. She said that nothing like this was mentioned in these supernatural communications that she received. In any event, we know the message of Fatima. It is enough to change our life. The message of Fatima is enough. It moves us to continue our contribution to the salvation of our society. And this is what is important. Reverend Dr. Manuel Formigao, canon of the Cathedral of Lisbon, professor at the seminary of Santarem, interrogated the children. He saw them separately. He asked the same question. 
Would the crowd, the people, be sad if they knew the secret? From each child, the same reply. Yes, they would. To a similar question asked by pilgrims in 1917, Lucia said only, good for some, for others, bad. Transformation of the COVID idea to the spiritual harbor seen here testifies to the belief, to the faith of millions of persons from throughout the world, visitors to the Basilica. Fatima continues to be the site of many physical miracles, yet spiritual conversions dominate. We are receiving three million pilgrims each year. I would like Fatima to be the refuge of pilgrims and the way which leads them to God. For Jacinta and Francisco, beatification and canonization proceedings are in progress. First in church history for children who had not been martyred. One of the prophecies speaks of a pope who will have much to suffer. The Pope lies wounded, but the attempt to kill has failed, and the gunman is captured. Italian authorities and other investigators discover evidence linking the would-be assassin to East European communists. The place, St. Peter's Square. The date, May 13th, 1981. The anniversary of the Virgin Mary's first appearance at Fatima. One year later, May 13th, 1982, Pope John Paul II convinced the Blessed Mother preserved his life on that fateful day, undertakes a pilgrimage to the Cova d'Iria, to Fatima, where he gives thanks to the Lady of the Rosary. Holy Mother of God, I am here today, united with all the pastors of the church. We entrust and consecrate to you those individuals and nations which particularly need to be entrusted. You who have a mother's awareness of all the struggles between good and evil, accept this cry. We have recourse to your protection. Reject not our prayers. From nuclear war, from every kind of war, deliver us from readiness to trample on the commandments of God, deliver us. May merciful love put a stop to evil. Sister Lucia is present. She had left Fatima as a girl of 14. Now, 62 years later, she returns to view the remarkable change that has occurred in her village. She's filled with joy to be present with the Pope and over a million and a half persons from virtually every nation of the world. In light of the threat of nuclear annihilation, the absence of peace in our world on virtually every level, Fatima emerges as both a sobering warning and a message of hope, a plan, a direction, not only for military, for political peace, but direction on how to find peace on a personal level. Statistics confirm an unprecedented rise in the use of drugs, in abortion, crime, child abuse, alcoholism, mental sickness, immorality. During the Fatima appearance of July 13th, the Virgin Mary gave three means as the ultimate answer to problems of everyday life. The answer to individual needs, daily prayer to make sacrifices to pray the rosary if western men persist in seeking satisfaction through power sin is certainly the forgotten word in our time through money it's true that uh, concepts like sin and hell have become very unpopular through erotic excitement our society publicly assumes god does not exist through indulgence in drugs, all these different things that they're doing to try and give their life some point, they will destroy themselves and their way of life. And that will be God's way of indicating 
that such a view of life and such a way of life is not viable. Underneath it all, I think large numbers of Westerners understand that higher meaning, any kind of true meaning, has disappeared. And the only meaning that's left is the personal meaning of their personal life, their career, their particular goals. And that's about all they care about. And so um, I would say that self-preoccupation and careerism are the psychological preoccupations that keep people from being aware of the emptiness in their life. Freud conquered the American public completely and totally and says the key to happiness is sex. So there was a sexual revolution and everyone tried it, or most people tried it, in and out, and they're bored by it. The new rock groups, the new uh, forms of art they are preoccupied with uh, with anger, with uh, hatred, in many cases with death, quite deliberately. I feel deeply pessimistic about what's going to happen to the civilization that we belong to, to this way of life that's come about. In a sense, the modern West is the first society in the history of the world which is experimenting with the possibility of uh, radical moral uncertainty. To my mind, the conflict between moral good and moral evil is a crucial question of human life. The Fatima message is not, in fact, original or startlingly new. It's the very timeless Christian message, Jewish message, repent your sins. Fatima is not a crusade against Russia. Fatima is a crusade, but a crusade of prayer and of penance of offering of our lives for the conversion of Russia and of all men who don't adore and who don't love God and mankind, finally. If we persist in going on the path that we have trodden on for quite a while and we forget God, we forget the purpose and meaning of human existence, there's every reason to be extraordinarily pessimistic because now we have means of self-destruction. And I mean, if these means of self-destruction are put at the service of evil, the world can be annihilated. All attempts to find a way out of the plight of today's world are fruitless without a repentant return of our consciousness to the creator of all. Without this, no exit will be illumined and we shall be unable to find our way. Instead of the ill-advised hopes of the last two centuries, which have reduced us to insignificance and brought us to the brink of nuclear and non-nuclear death, we can only reach with determination for the warm hand of God, which we have so rashly and self-confidently pushed away. If we did this, our eyes could be opened to the errors of this unfortunate 20th century, and our hands could be directed to set them right. Our five continents are caught in a whirlwind. If we perish and lose this world, the fault will be ours alone. The children of Fatima were told by the Virgin Mary that the miracle would be performed so that all might believe the message that prayer and penance are gravely needed that this is the answer to the plight of today's world the message of Fatima return to God Ricardo Montalban will return in a moment
it's important this Fatima message be known by as many persons as possible. You can help St. Gabriel's, a nonprofit organization, purchase television time in other cities by sending your donation to Fatima, Post Office Box 9000, Farmington, Michigan, 48024. Oh, you'll receive a gift, an authoritative book on Fatima based on personal interviews with Sister Lucia. We believe this film, the Fatima message, can bring direction to many in this world yearning for peace in so many ways.